I'm going to wrap up my coverage of the user interface by talking about the animation palette or the animation toolbar that's right here. Two little rows of things here. You can tell they're separate rows of things because of these little handles here, these little grabber bars. These guys work a lot like the grabber bars inside After Effects. Let me show you that briefly. In After Effects, if you look at the tabs here, right to the left, there's a little grabber bars there too. They're not as obvious as they are in Cinema 4D, but they let you move things around. I'll take this guy here and move it over like that. This allows you to rearrange the panels here inside After Effects. I'll take that guy and move it back. Well, the same thing applies inside Cinema 4D. So you can see these are separate items here because they each have their own little set of grabber bars there. In any event, the animation palette is divided up into three areas here. This top one is called the Timeline Ruler, and this little green thing here is the current frame. And they do mean frame here. They don't mean current time. That's because everything in the Timeline Ruler is frames. Even if you go back to Edit Preferences, Edit Preferences, and change units to something other than frames. We'll go over here to Simply Time Code, which is minutes, seconds, and frames. Notice that you have minutes, seconds, and frames here and here and over here in the project settings, but not here in the timeline ruler. That is going to be frames, period. So you might as well use frames here throughout just to have some consistency like that. You can drag this thing through to go to different times. Right now, nothing will happen because nothing's animated, but we'll change that in just a moment here. This is called the power slider down here, which is pretty much like the zoom feature inside the timeline inside After Effects. You can zoom in on one side or the other by just dragging it left and right like that. We're zooming in on the left side by pushing the right side off the side like that. Exact same thing over here, just on the opposite side. If you want to move both sides equally, hold on the Alt or the Option button while you drag here, then it moves it equally, like so. And a little keyboard shortcut to get it back to full width here is Control or Command A, which selects everything, including everything here inside the view panel. I'll click away on that one. Right now we have a 90 frame scene, and I set my default size to 150, but I wanted to set this one to 90 so we can change it. So to change something like this, you just highlight it by dragging your cursor over it. I'll type in 150 now, press Enter key. There we go. And notice that this guy slides off to the left, so you're still only showing 90 frames here. You can zoom out on the view by just dragging it like that. Now they're all 150 frames. You can go to a specific frame over here by dragging this up or down. These are your navigation icons, which work the way you'd expect them to work. This is the play button like that. The normal default for playing forwards is F8, but I changed that shortcut to the space bar because that's so commonly used inside After Effects. If you didn't change it, that's fine. I explained how to change it back in Chapter 2 when I talked about changing some preferences and shortcuts. Just as a reminder, I did it up here. Window, Customization, Customize Commands. You can go back a frame one at a time, go forward a frame one at a time. You can jump to the next keyframe or to the previous keyframe, which we don't have right now, but that's fine. Go back to zero or to the start, go to the end, like that. These are the mode icons. This first one lets you set keyframes for the active object or objects. Right now there are no active objects, so it's grayed out. But if I click on this guy, for example, he's now active, so this button is active now. I'm gonna explain keyframe animation later in the course, but I'll just do something really briefly now. Let's just take this guy back to the home position by clicking on that. And I set keyframes by simply clicking on this, and that records a keyframe right there. And you can tell there's a keyframe there by just moving this out of the way a bit. You'll see a little blue thing there. And the keyframes are object specific. So if I click on something else, that guy will disappear. Let's go to the end by pressing this key here. And I'll move it back a bit so we're not right at the end, like 130 instead. I'm going to move him a little bit. Just slide him to the left like that. Maybe push him back a bit like that. So now I've changed his position. And if we did that in After Effects, we would automatically create a keyframe, but that's not the case here in the default setting for Cinema 4D. I need to click on this guy again to set another keyframe. But I could use this guy here, that's the automatic keyframing. So if I click that, that would be automatically noticing the change here, but that's not the default. All right, let's do the same thing for the platonic just to see how that works. So I'm going to go back to the beginning by clicking on this key here. Take the platonic and click on it, making it active. Set a keyframe for it. We'll go to the end now. I'll take the platonic and drag it to the right, let's say, and pull it forward a bit, lift it up a bit. All right, we've changed its position, but we haven't added any keyframes yet, so I'm going to click on this button to add some keyframes. And now that we have some keyframes, let's see how this works. I'm going to press the space bar or the play forwards button, and we'll watch this animation. And pause it like so. Now we're working here in the animation palette on the timeline ruler here, not to be confused with the timeline. The nomenclature in Cinema 4D can sometimes be a little confusing. This is the timeline ruler, but there's a separate thing called the timeline. To see that, I go up here to the layout in the upper right hand corner and change that to animation. And this is the timeline as opposed to the timeline ruler. And the timeline shows keyframes on an object to object and property to property basis. So, for example, there's the figure and there are the figure's keyframes. You can't see all of them, but you can navigate here by using this guy here and dragging it left like that. 
but we're going to talk about the animation layout and the timeline later in the course, and I'll just cover it briefly just to kind of give you a feel for how this works. So let's go back to the startup here. These guys let you limit what's being keyframed. Right now it's everything, position, scale, rotation, but you can turn them off to suit your purposes. You use the parameter option when you're working with some specific keyframe properties, and you work with point level animation when you're working with polygons. Finally, this is where you can set the playback rate, and we're going to keep it at the default setting, the project playback rate. So there you go, that's a rundown on the animation palette.